Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another DevReach Spotlight interview. Today with me, I have the amazing Sam Basu. He's a technologist, an author, speaker, MVP, and just developer and all around amazing uh, advocate for us at Progress. So I'm super humbled and honored to not only get to work with him, but to get to see him on stage at DevReach. Um, and so Sam, thank you so much for taking time to be here today. How are you doing? Oh, good. I've been, you know, building up on this amazingly, you know, male voice for years now. It's oh, yeah. finally come to fruition. Yeah, we it, it came right at the perfect time where, for your your interview, right? <laughs> yeah, sorry to be sounding so bad, but I'm recording from a cold. Uh, but, you know, I'm here. I'm just happy. So tell us, Sam, how did you get your start? I don't know if I've ever heard this story in development or in technology in general. Okay, I'm going to start with what I usually start off saying I'm old. Um, <laughs> I go way back and um, back in my days coming out of, you know, high school, uh, you know, gaming and computers were, you know, where my heart was mm -hmm. and you always wanted to, you know, discover how things were built. Uh, how do things move on screen? How do I make this work? Uh, kind of, you know, uh, late nineties, early days of the internet and just trying to figure things out. So I really had no doubt coming out of high school that, you know, computers is what I wanted to, you know, be in and learn and, you know, a college degree, uh, it's, you know, questionable how much of that is usable, but it, it does teach you, teach you all of the basics for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it gives you a foundation so you can explore and do things on your own. Um, so yeah, that's how I got started in computer science and, you know, coming out of a college degree, uh, you know, I was in, I mean, there would, there would be nothing else I would rather do. Maybe, maybe become a pilot, maybe do something okay. else with sports, okay. but uh, I just wasn't good enough. Like a plane pilot or a helicopter mm -hmm. pilot? No, planes. I've always been fascinated by aviation and, you know, fast cars and sports as well until it starts taking a toll on your body. Uh, and you realize that you're, I'm better off behind a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> so with your journey into technology and always knowing that it would be something with computers for you, what led you to the dark, I mean, the .NET side <laughs> of technology? <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah, the other dark side wasn't actually all that uh, prevalent <laughs> back in the days because uh, the web wasn't as matured as we, you know, uh, assume it is nowadays. So I grew up with early days of, um, you know, it wasn't even .NET um, back in the days. What was that? Uh, yeah, so prior to .NET, we had several uh, technologies from Microsoft and, you know, from IBM, uh, things like, you know, Java, things like, you know, Visual Basic. So this was, you know, pre.NET and uh, browsers. Oh, I, not, so Visual Basic doesn't count as .NET? It does because Visual Basic, the way we know it nowadays, it's yes. it's a language. It's a VB.NET is what we call. So it's a language with some syntactical sugar that still runs on .NET, but that's today. Prior to .NET, Visual Basic was its own thing. Oh my God, did own... you do, and you did it? Like you touched it back then? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Even before VB, there was a thing called, uh, uh, you know, Visual Fox Pro, uh, then Visual Basic 6. You uh, have to so... explain this to me. What did it look like? Was it like WYSIWYG? Was it like um, ones and zeros? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't assembly, but you, you kind of had crude tools to put things on screen. Uh, you know, similar ideas, like when you click on a button, you had to write some code that right. triggered uh, what, he, what, what that you know, action did. Uh, but it wasn't on a foundational, consistent uh, platform like we have with modern .NET. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I started. I did some Java. I did some Visual Basic here and there. Uh, and .NET, early days of .NET came around maybe around 2001-ish, 2002-ish. So by the okay. time I was out of college, like .NET was the thing uh, okay. for me to get into. I mean, I, I did some Java and it was fine, uh, but I'm, I'm glad I deviated towards uh, .NET because it's, it's a very mature stack nowadays to, you know, build your, you know, applications on. When you started deviating into .NET, what were you looking like what were you using was it like xamarin or was it before no, that those those things were not even there at that oh, was it no 
Um, so we started with uh, very basic Windows desktop apps. Uh, that's kind of the foundations of where uh, .NET began. Uh, we used to call them WinForms, uh, Windows Forms, which is funny because you can actually still build the WinForms app. I was going to say, is this different than the WinForms? No, like you it's do the today? same. It's oh. the same. And th this is the, you know, uh, a magical thing for me because you take something that's 20 years old and you can still run it. You can it still on run it. .net. Oh, not only it's that, but cool. I meet more and more people that are just like, yeah, WinForms is still cool. And I'm like, it is, it was very productive, still <laughs> is. Um, so that was Windows desktop. And then, you know, the web in its early days, people were trying to do other technologies. Uh, right. When .NET first started doing web, uh, it was a lot of trying to draw inspiration from what we did on Windows. So, you know, a lot of, you know, drag and drop, a lot of point and click uh, type things. It what wasn't... was .NET Web before Blazor? Oh, uh, that Blazor is very new, actually. If you look at the timeline, Blazor came along 2017-ish timeframe, so about five years back. So prior to that, uh, you know, prior to .NET, there were still... Uh, a Microsoft play with uh, web apps. It was called ASP, uh, Classic Server Pages. So yes. a lot of, you know, oh, okay. rendering things on the server and just shipping HTML, CSS on the client side. Okay. Uh, and that had uh, its roots in, you know, a lot of desktop development. Uh, so a lot of the ideas were kind of borrowed uh, from desktop development and, you know, along comes, uh, you know, modern web. So mm -hmm. we started doing a lot more things client side. Uh, and even even now, like if you look at prior to Blazor, uh, yeah. ASP.NET is a very rich web framework. It's, uh, you know, that's how .NET developers have always built web apps. Mm. It just, uh, it's very suitable for server side first. Okay. Uh, it, it tries to do more things server side. Sure, you can do AJAX, you can, right. do, you know, you can have little frames where you can go talk to the server and update a little part of your web app, but mm. it mostly tries to do everything on the server side and just like ship. Uh, markdown uh, and you know markup and styles down to the uh, client. So prior to Blazor, we were not doing .NET on the client side. Uh, so oh. Blazor it does change. Blazor, so the that was the first yep. client yep. side .NET mm -hmm. yep. person. So okay. you can understand why Blazor is exciting for .NET developers because it lets you do for the first time .NET front and back. So uh, the the promise is big, uh, definitely. But you know, oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, people have been building modern web apps with JavaScript for like 15, you know, years now. Uh, and, and that plays nicely with .NET as well. So, you know, it's just the right tools for the right apps. Very cool. So your talk for DevReach titled Desktop Apps Your Way, it covers many solutions to bridge this gap of web apps and your actual desktop needs. Um, so without spoiling too much of your talk, can you give us an overview of some of the solutions that it entails? Yeah, I may have started out mentioning I'm old, which means I, I, I get the pain, I, I get the frustration, uh, you know, desktop development has evolved over like 25 years. So uh, there are a lot of choices, uh, which is, you know, fundamentally not a bad thing for developers until we have too much of choice and then we are crippled and we are yeah. second, sec second guessing ourselves. This is my sister blames me for this all the time because I'm like to my toddler, which of these 20 items would you prefer? And he just stares at me and my sister's like, choice overload. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the good news is, uh, you know, your investments don't need to all go away. Like we talked about WinForms, uh, there are, you know, WPF, uh, there are things on the Mac side of the world. Um, so anything that you have done over the last, you know, uh, 20 years, not all of it needs to go away. In fact, you can keep running those uh, forever if you want. Some of the you know, fundamental pieces are part of Windows. They're part of Mac or Linux. So they're not going away, except you're going to have a uh, you know, harder and harder time maintaining such code bases and finding developers who are excited to be working on such projects. So right. it, it makes sense to try to modernize a little bit, uh, you know, not throw away, not try to recreate things from scratch, but bring in you know islands of uh you know coolness islands of modernness in your app and you know modern technologies like javascript and .NET enable you to you know cross that bridge uh, pretty seamlessly uh the, the desire like you folks are pretty cool uh, folks who do web apps uh, <laughs> things are very different in the desktop world and we would yeah. love to be as cool as you are uh, so uh, this desire to get web things to work nicely on desktop it's nothing new 
Yeah. Uh, so over the years, we have learned uh, a variety of techniques to try to bridge this gap. And I think modern frameworks, modern tools make this fairly easy for developers to, you know, get the best of both worlds. Mm. That's awesome. I know you listed out things like Electron, like PWAs. I know you even taught me how to do things with like Maui Blazer hybrid wrapper. Like, is there, if you have to ship something, is there like a SAM approved way? Like your favorite? <laughs> like, yeah. uh, it, it depends. The classic answer. It, okay. it depends a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, like how native do you want things? Uh, would you want a code base, which uh, clearly serves or caters to the UX of mobile apps or desktop apps, uh, mouse and keyboard first and touch first uh, versus uh, do you already have a team that does some web and maybe you're trying to bring uh, some of that goodness over. Um, right. So it depends uh, app to app and team to team and what type of code base you want to maintain. Uh, the good news is they can all coexist and you, <laughs> you can pick and choose what works for you. Uh, that's awesome. I cannot wait for your talk. Desktop apps, your way at DevReach. Make sure you check it out. Um, and if you haven't bought tickets yet, they're still on sale. Do, and we, we hope to see you. <laughs> I, have, I have been to, you know, so many places in Europe, but uh, Sofia, Bulgaria continues to be one of my absolute favorite. It's got such a unique old world charm mixed in with some such modern lifestyles. It's yeah. just a beautiful city, absolutely wonderful people, wonderful food. So come and hang out with us. Yeah. Is, so is there anything that you're most looking forward to at DevReach this year? Uh, except for all of the people, all of my friends all together, uh, you know, geeking out over <laughs> our latest technologies. Uh, like I said, great food, great friends, uh, you know, great beverages, uh, and just a really cool vibe all around. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much again for taking time out of your day, darling. And we'll see you live on stage very, very soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Bye.